really, really is the thing that made all the difference for you understanding this and, and improving and getting back to your own health. But how does, if I were to ask you kind of just to give us an overall picture of how does, how do women's bodies change and how do our hormones change as we get older and what impact does that change have on the way we feel and function on our health? Yes. Oh my gosh. Yes. So when we look at, and I'll start with, you know, when we have an active cycle and then move to, you know, um, when that changes. So, uh, simple, um, explanation. And again, every body is different. Your system may be a little different. This also can change, um, through different things in your life. This is impacted by nutrition, exercise, stress, right? Other people, right? Your hormones can shift and change. I mean, we've all like lived with other gals in college or something and it doesn't take very long for your cycle to link up, right? Your hormones are impressionable. So just keep in mind, this is not like set in stone ever and it can shift and change, which we can use to our advantage. But day one is the first day of your period. Day 14 is about when you ovulate and day 28 is when that ends. And estrogen is the most dominant hormone in the first couple of weeks. It rises here and then it falls in that second half there. Progesterone is lower at the beginning and then rises here in the second part. And these hormones do two different things. So estrogen is going to like give you more energy. It's going to help build lean muscle, which is really, really important. Um, and we're going to talk about that, especially as the body changes next. Um, it's going to increase your digestive system, help you recover from workouts better, burn carbs faster, you know, all this other stuff. So that's what estrogen does. When your body's higher in progesterone, uh, progesterone, it means progestation. So it's prepping your system for a viable pregnancy every month, whether or not it's there, which means it's going to slow down your digestive system. It's going to absorb nutrients differently. You're going to have a harder time recovering from workouts. Um, sometimes it zaps your energy a little bit, uh, but your basal body temperature is going to be higher here. So you can tap into some different fat storing, um, fat burning you know, deeper fat storage areas to burn, I should say. Higher. So that's kind of the basic difference throughout the month. So if you look at it and say, oh, what's my body doing right in this week, right? Like, oh, oh, look at that. That estrogen's higher. Okay, it's gonna be doing that. And then, oh, look at over here. Oh, wow, progesterone's higher. So even though you might wake up at the same time, eat the same thing for breakfast, you know, hydrate the same and go for the same five mile run, it might feel way easier on day eight than it does on day 25. Why? Because you took a different body for a run. You, right? So often we'll do things and you're like, dang it, what did I do wrong? You didn't do anything wrong. It was just a different body you took for a run and you might need to shift how you fuel to relate to what body you're living in at that time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So when we shift and change and we go through perimenopause, perimenopause is a point where your estrogen levels, they don't disappear. That's another thing I, I wish they educated women so much more. But again, we're not educated. You know, people don't talk about this. We have to do this learning on our own. Um, but your estrogen levels just drop, right? They don't go away, but they just drop, right? They're lower here. So you're not getting as much of the muscle building, the muscle repair, things like that progesterone levels do the same thing. They're going to drop as well. Again, there's a slight variation, um, you know, but it's not as much as it was before. So perimenopause um, is this piece here where this drops and then full menopause is when they both drop. Now, the one thing that can happen, especially as the female body shifts and changes from having an active cycle to menopause and that space in between, right? Um, I wanna use a different color marker here, okay. So we're gonna do, um, perimenopause here, and then we'll do like full menopause here. And just a few differences here. So this phase can last one, to 10 years. How many of okay. you knew that? <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> That's wow. Yeah, yeah. 
So this is where women can get really frustrated with their bodies, feeling like, gosh, I feel like I just got this down or, oh, what the heck, right? An average age is again, like 52. But if you have had a lot of stress in your life, you can go into menopause earlier. You can enter perimenopause earlier. It can last longer for you. Mm -hmm. These are all things that are impact. Your health is cumulative. So how healthy you were before you start this phase will impact how easy or tough this phase is for you. Mm, that's good. Yeah. It's really, really important. A lot of women look at and say, oh my gosh, I'm in perimenopause. I'm having all these issues now. My sleep is terrible. My, my hot flashes are coming day and night. I have no idea. Uh, my mood swings are off the charts. And when I do get a cycle, it's just awful. Right. And if you have health issues leading into this, this can make it a lot tougher. Hormone issues, all these other things. And then going through this, again, it can make it last longer. Essentially, it's your liver that's in charge of processing these hormones. So if your liver still has issues going through this phase, it makes it tougher. Another thing to keep in mind on top of this, stress. Stress impacts the female body differently than it does the male body. Yay. If you have an active cycle and you have a lot of stress, I can't tell you how many women I have heard from in the past like four or five months with all the stress of like of 2020 of what it is, right? Oh my gosh, my period was regular for such a long time. And now it's totally irregular or I'm late. I skip periods. What the heck? Stress on the cycle. It will delay or cancel ovulation, things like that. And that's the thing to really recognize here with this perimenopause, estrogen drops, and it's this progesterone piece that's going to be in charge of the ovulation. So that's what really gets impacted by stress a ton, which if you've already, already have some irregular cycles, or this is all over the place for you, then you add in another layer of stress, it makes it even worse. So it's, it's really important to address these things. Yeah. And then tell us about where cortisol comes in, because I remember that from your last talk with us. So tell us about that and the role that plays and where we yeah. expect to see increases in that. Yeah. So um, cortisol um, is a stress hormone. It's produced from your adrenals. So for a lot of us, we're under stress, stressors of some kind, and we're used to it, right? I mean, women are like, yeah, yeah, it's fine. I got stress, but it's no different. So I'm just going to keep going with it. Sure, sure. Right. I'll make it through the day. But we don't realize that even if you have like a seven out of 10 stress level, and it's been like that for a longer period of time, that it has a really negative impact on your hormones. That's the thing that, and again, it's, it's shifting now. Now your body right now is under more stress than it was a year ago at this time, right? It just is, it just is. Everybody's world is different. So how does that impact your hormones? How does that, it makes it harder to process. It makes it harder for your liver to process these hormones. Your liver has to process the cortisol as well. Other fun things about cortisol is that it's going to increase your carb cravings, sugar cravings. It's going to make it harder to burn any fat. And my favorite thing about it is that it will actually tell your fat cells to hold on to anything that you're eating. Just say, oh, oh, did you eat celery? Oh, thank you. We're just going to store that right in a fat cell, hold on to it, and not let it go. It's cortisol's favorite, favorite game to play. So that's not fun, right? Fat cells are supposed to be like little flat pancakes, right? Like, like um, deflated balloons. And, and you have the same number of fat cells you know, right now, as you did since you were like seven years old. So when you gain and lose weight or gain and lose fat mass, keep in mind that it's not that you get more fat, right? When you add more weight, it's just those, those fat cells will increase in size like that. And then they store inside of them all that stuff. And the main driver for that is that cortisol. So what that means is this is not as simple as, oh, I got to eat cleaner. Oh, I just have to, you know, do three hours of cardio every day. And then that will help me lose the weight. 
it literally will not affect these fat cells. You have to make sure you are maintaining your system and your frame and supporting muscle tissue. The key, one of the biggest key things for women and as the body ages to really get your body to actually what we call burn fat, which means it's gonna tap into these fat cells, break them open, that energy then can come out and be used by your tissues, by your body. And then this fat cell can shrink in size and go back to this size. It can like deflate like a balloon. Otherwise, if you're not, you know, supporting your body properly to actually work with your metabolism, this is having a good metabolism, being able to target these fat cells, to release that stuff, to have the fat cells go shrink. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So, so basically understanding kind of that once we enter perimenopause and menopause, our hormones are in a completely different state. We're starting to feel different. We're starting to notice, you know, because of that decrease in estrogen, things like a decrease in energy, maybe mental clarity isn't as good as it used to be. Mm -hmm. Um, We have a harder time processing carbs. All those things are going on, right? Mm -hmm. So, so what, you know, let's talk about exercise and nutrition. Where do those come in in us feeling better and functioning better given what's changing with our hormones? Yeah. Yes. So one of the biggest things here that the menopausal body has, and in the perimenopause body, this is in that transition phase to here. So things can occur at different times, but your body is going to have a harder time um, building muscle right? It's just not going to build muscle as well. Um, it wants it, it building muscle, like doesn't want to happen. It wants to store fat. That's just, that's what it wants to do. You know, any excess stressors, anything, right? You don't sleep well, all that stuff. Yep. And again, that's another thing too. Your sleep is disrupted. Um, decrease in your sleep. And again, because these hormones shift and change, you're more likely to have things like brain fog, if your body's not processing through these things properly. Um, oh, what was the other thing you just said? And then I got excited about talking about muscle tissue. <laughs> um, so building muscle in general, this is related to um, like not only being able to work out, but also able to recover. So, and that's why I love what you guys do, right? At the exercise host, because the way you track the increase in um, strength is so important to be able to know, am I actually building muscle? If you're building muscle, you'll be able to lift more, right? You'll be able to lift more and do more. If not, you can't do that. I, I had a conversation with a gal, this was a couple of weeks ago. She was a professional bicyclist, like rode, like Lance Armstrong type of thing rode a bicycle professionally for years and years and years and she's retired now and she has been for a few years but she said gosh I've been having all these issues with my health recently I can't seem to lose this weight this this belly fat that's the thing about this yeah this is belly fat by the way that's where it loves to hang out tire right around the midsection And she, so she was like, this belly fat, it just, I've never had this before. I can't get rid of it. I don't understand. She's like, I've been actually training like I used to, and it won't go away. And I was like, well, what do you mean? She's like, yeah, for about six months, I've been really training hard and I can't get rid of it. And I said, well, in the six months you've been training, have you been getting more fit? Have you been getting stronger? Have you noticed an actual increase in your performance? And she was like, actually, no, I have completely plateaued. I said, aha you are not actually building any muscle at all without being able to build that muscle. And again, the way you guys are tracking it, that lets you know that this is happening in your system. You have to build muscle in order to burn fat. It cannot happen without that, especially in the female body, especially in the female menopausal body. I mean, just having this hormonal shift and change in, in going through perimenopause to menopause, you'll gain an average of seven to 10 pounds, seven to 10 pounds on average. Now this is not, oh, I decided to you know eat cookies and sit on the couch all day. This is, you'll gain seven to 10 pounds on average, not changing anything. You eat the same, you're working out the same, right? But why am I gaining weight? 
because your body's different. Your body's different. <laughs> and right now seems like a great time. I remember last time you were with us, you mm -hmm. explained that the female body is quicker to metabolize muscle mass for energy than it is body fat. Yes. Mm -hmm. That is important to know because we are already naturally losing muscle mass as we age it's called sarcopenia. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And on top of that, as women, as we age, our bodies are wanting to eat up that muscle tissue we have for energy over and above body fat. So just can you spell out why that is? Um, and yeah. that's the reason we have to maintain our muscle and our body to combat our body doing that, you know, and so it can, we can shift that to body fat or get its energy from natural carbohydrates and, and blood, you know, blood sugar energy. Yeah. That we use yeah. Not yeah. Yeah. And in terms of doing this, I mean, it actually doesn't take very long for your body to decondition. So if you are, oh, I've been really regular and working out. I've been working out for months. Oh, I'm doing good. Oh, I'm going to take a few weeks off. I'm just going to, that's not a big deal. I don't need to go in this month. No, it takes two weeks. That's it. Ah! Like two weeks of you not working out and your body starts to decondition this muscle tissue. Now I'm not saying it goes all away, but your body then is more likely to start targeting it then even faster. <sighs> what? Everybody's going to come into the gym tomorrow now. Everybody. <laughs> <laughs> But what happens for women, so this is your muscle tissue, right? You got all these muscle fibers as you work out and train. The goal is, is that you kind of break down some of these fibers so that it can be built up again, stronger, stronger, stronger. And if your body's not able to tap into this fat cell and use this for energy, that can't happen. It's faster for the female body to start to whittle away at this muscle tissue, whittle away at this muscle tissue, right? And, and the phrasing is called skinny fat, right? Ah, uh, you're, you get skinny fat, right? <clears throat> it's where you're like, gosh, I, I've been working out, but I, I have a hard time, you know, um, pushing myself through my workout. I get fatigued at the end. <clears throat> you should finish just as strong as when you start, you know, or pretty close. And that lets you know, you have a lot of stamina built up in that muscle tissue and that you can keep building that muscle tissue, right? That's the big key. This, and this is not about becoming like, a hulk or like rah, beefcake you know no not at all this is about getting enough muscle tissue to actually help you target this because this is then supported but again under stress through this hormonal shift and change your body it's easier it's easier for your system to say oh look this is quick and easy to target and it's fast energy fast energy fast turnaround <sighs> yeah this is for some women um Oh, it's amazing. I, I, I've chatted with women that are, uh, oh, they're 54 and they start CrossFit because, because they're like, I, I want to get fit. I got to do something. And they'll do a workout and they're sore for five days. Do you have any idea how much that's like going like this? Your body is not just, you know, breaking it down. It's starting to eat that tissue and then it's not building it back up. So in terms of trying to get more fit or burn more fat or things like that, the female body just doesn't do that. Not when you don't have the muscle tissue. The women's body, when you're working out, the female body can actually um, get to fat burning during a workout a little bit quicker than a male body, but we don't get to stay in fat burning all day. Men's bodies, they'll do a workout and they'll be in fat burning for like 21 hours. 22 hours, like all day, even when they go to sleep. <laughs> That's why guys, you know, they start working out, right? I was, my joke is like, you know, you can, they can sneeze and fart and drop five pounds, right? Mm -hmm. They just, they got some abs right there, right? That was, that was it for them. <laughs> yeah. And as women, we know that's not our story. <laughs> no, no, you can fall, right? Like the, this happens all the time, like husband and wife, they'll go on a diet together and they'll start working out and all these things. And she will follow this plan a hundred percent, right? Like just right on it. And at the end of a month, and he's like, he's doing it mostly still having beer and pizza at least one once a week, you know, but he's mostly going along with it. Right. Mm -hmm. At the end of the month, 
she's lost two pounds and he's lost 20. Right? Yeah, it's because men, it's testosterone. Testosterone, boom, can build muscle like this so fast, so easy. And it maintains it. It maintains it and keeps it there and protects it so that it forces their system to just target fat. Whereas the female body just doesn't have that, right? I mean, we do, women's bodies do have testosterone, right? We do. The other thing to, uh, to realize and recognize, and I see this a lot for women going through perimenopause and menopause, is that besides the estrogen, because estrogen is in charge of building muscle, when that starts to drop in this perimenopause phase, that's when you need to really target your proteins and getting that in because it becomes harder right here. Estrogen drops first in perimenopause. When you get to menopause and both hormone levels drop, the next thing I typically tend to see is that for women, if you've had stress, and hormonal issues is that testosterone levels also are low. Mm. How do you know if your testosterone levels are low? Besides not you know, having a hard time building lean muscle and burning fat and having that tire around your midsection, libido. If your libido is terrible or has decreased, right? That's a sign that your testosterone is also low. So then what do you have to help you build muscle? Not a lot, <laughs> right? <laughs> not a lot. So it means you really need to focus on the nutrients for your system to fill that gap. It, it becomes essential and vital and so important. Um, so it's, it's just one of those things that as the body changes, I hate to say it's just like, this is terrible to go through. It, it is what it is. But as long as you know, oh, I see my body's starting to lose that um, you know, estrogen. So of course I have to make sure I'm getting enough protein because I'm gonna build muscle a little bit slower now. Okay, now I'm potentially could be losing more testosterone too, or that could be low for me because my libido's in the tank. Yup. Really target that. Really target weightlifting. That that you know resistance training. It's a, that's how that gets built physically, and then supporting it with protein. Those are the two magic things. Magic things, right? Mm -hmm. Not magic, but it, you know, but. Good. It's simple and the human body is what it is, mm -hmm. but understanding why is, is motivating for, for us, for me to yeah. say, okay, I get why it's important to do this. Not only I should do this, but I, I see the actual value and I'm picturing in, in the body what's going on. And I want that, I want that result, right? Yeah. I want to, so you were actually, let's talk about the importance of dietary protein. So yeah. You have some I, five bullets to share, I think, about it. But I do. Why, why is it so important to make sure we're getting adequate protein? Yes. Oh, that's, this is the number one nutrient that I find women are missing. Protein. Protein in adequate amounts, right? And, it, and I, you know, I get, it goes back to how much we're told to eat, right? And the whole, you know, it's almost like we get brainwashed to, oh, do you want to, you know, lose weight? You just have to eat less and, oh, make sure you're having salad for lunch and all these things. Women are not told to eat protein, right? It's not like uh, growing up, you know, looking at like Cosmo or Glamour or different magazines and being like, oh, have a fit toned body. They talk about like drinking water and, you know, these little tiny weights and then going for walks and eating salad. Mm. That's not <laughs> it, right? It's not it at all. Um, protein, protein pacing. So, and also if you guys, um, there's, you know, I, I have a lot of references and resources for you guys, um, depending on what you have. So at the end, we can talk about that too. Some other books, if you're looking for more research or you want to deep dive into a specific thing, you know, I have a ton of resources for you, but there's also other stuff there that you can check into as well that are really good. Um, but we'll start here. Yeah. With that protein. Cause again, if you don't have it here, that estrogen drops here and you definitely don't have it here, it's just that much harder. So it is, it is protein and it is resistance training for that muscle that allows you to get the maximum fat burning for you. So, and that is you while you're working out and then the three hours after you're working out. Otherwise, the menopausal female body will not target fat at all throughout your day. It does not. Now, again, this does not mean you have to work out for like, you know, 15 hours a day. No, it's specific, it's fueled, and it's overall helping your system function really, really well. So, but to get this in, <clears throat> dietary protein is essential and how the body functions 
with protein. Um, other important things to realize, oh, when we look at getting proteins in, get a variety of proteins, right? If you eat meat, awesome. If you don't, awesome, right? As long as you're getting a variety in, you're gonna be covering what your system needs. Basic things about protein though to realize too, is that um, there are, I'll just go like this so I don't, I'm gonna make sure I, you guys can still see this on the screen. Um, there are 20, um, 22, 20 essential, I'm counting right. Yep, 11 and nine. Um, so amino acids, right? Amino acids, they're broken down to non-essential and essential, right? And the difference here is that essentially your body's gonna make some and then you get some from foods. That's the, bas that's the basic difference, right? So the essential ones, because it's essential that you get them from there. So your body's supposed to make nine and you're supposed to eat the other 11, right? And the, a variety of things, right? Chicken, turkey, fish, beef, um, pea protein, um, hemp protein, just, uh, you know, things like that. There's, uh, there's protein in broccoli and quinoa and all these like seeds, you know, pumpkin seeds, all this stuff, sunflower seeds, everything. You're supposed to get the other 11 here. Now this nine though, so it's almost half. If your body's under stress, it will not make all nine. So this is something I've seen recently too, is that women, if you're not shifting and changing, oh my gosh, I'm going through this hormonal change, I'm under stress too. This makes it that much more important because all of a sudden your body's only gonna make say six of the non-essential. So now you just have to have that much more made up there, right? Now you're gonna have to make sure you're getting a variety of 14 different types from your food. So variety, 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 and getting these numbers in. <clears throat> So I just want to, you don't have to count these, but just to let you know that stress does impact how well your body can do muscle building. And again, protein is where it's at. That's the baseline. So how do we get protein in? How much protein do I need? What's the threshold for building that, that lean muscle? The threshold is 20 grams. 20 grams of protein from that you eat allows protein muscle synthesis allows your body to actually rebuild the, that muscle fiber. So it's 20 grams of protein, meaning if you eat something, oh, I had breakfast and I had two eggs and a piece of toast. Okay. That's not bad, but an egg has about six grams of protein in it. So you're getting about, you know, you're getting about 12 just for breakfast, right? So that's not enough to actually rebuild muscle tissue. So when we talk about protein, the, my, the easiest way to think about it is protein pacing. And you're gonna wanna hit that 20 gram mark every time you eat. So if you eat five meals a day, you know, like a breakfast, snack, lunch, snack, dinner, right? Which is pretty typical um, for a lot of people if you're active and again, getting to an increased metabolic rate overall, breakfast, snack, lunch, snack, dinner, five meals a day, you wanna shoot for 20 grams at each one. Oh, that's so much. I know. <laughs> so you're like, what? Are so, you and that's the answer. It's not 20 grams per day. It's 20 grams per meal or 20, 20 grams per every time you eat. Does it matter if you only eat three meals, Dr. Beth? No, no, just a minimum of 20. So again, if you're only going to eat three meals, then you want to shoot for at least like 35 right? A breakfast, lunch, and dinner here, right? To have about a hundred grams here again. But it's, you know, for some people they're like, oh my gosh, I can't eat 35 grams of protein at once. Okay. Well then just split it up and get it differently throughout the day. But this is protein pacing. This is protein pacing, getting at least a hundred grams. And that's the place to start. This is typically double what I find women are getting. Mm -hmm. Well, double. how many people listening are picturing what you're eating in a day and wondering if you're anywhere close to 100 grams? Mm -hmm. I'm in here. Um, I mean, how many grams of protein would we guess there is in like an eight ounce steak? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I don't, you know, like 
but that's yeah not close at all not very close mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so so why so we're we're trying to focus on getting this dietary protein one because it helps actually regulate our stress like you you yeah. said last time protein consumption can actually help to kind of um manage the cortisol levels we have right yep mm-hmm. um which is it a, increases your body's capacity to handle the stress. So like you can't stop the stress from coming at you, mm-hmm. but you can increase, you know, you can have like a better defense. Mm-hmm. The more protein you eat, the better defense you have. So that stress isn't going to come tear you down. The stress isn't going to come tear away that muscle tissue. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So let's talk about protein because how do we get enough protein? Well, obviously we have protein. This is my best friend. Um, I know Dr. Beth. I want you to hear this, you guys, because um, we talked about coach field before and it's very bright in here, but this is, we have two kinds of uh, protein, especially if you're working out and after a workout um, to blend into a smoothie. Um, Our coach fuel has within it 20 grams of protein per serving. This Mm -hmm. is the regular coach fuel. If you add like a scoop of almond butter into it or a scoop of collagen that's not flavored, I mean, you're getting even more in that one, in that one um, smoothie. But did you know that protein powder is also more versatile than smoothies? Uh, you can mm-hmm. use protein powder to make protein balls. You can do um, bars with it. Dr. Beth actually even has a cookbook with uh, protein recipes, including things like protein pancakes, mm-hmm. and protein muffins. So protein, protein, coach fuel is my preferred. That's, that's what I'm going to plug, Dr. Beth, just because it's my favorite. It tastes great uh-huh. and it's high quality, but um, super convenient way to get in that protein, especially, you know, when you're in, on the go. Mm-hmm. Um, Mary says she uses it in oatmeal. But yeah, a lot of people are, are how many grams of coach protein powder per serving? So 20 grams is in our regular coach fuel. Mm-hmm. If you use the coach fuel dairy free, I think that has 16 grams per scoop. You can just put a little bit more than a scoop into your smoothie and there you go. Or you can supplement that one scoop with, like I said, almond butter has about four grams of protein per tablespoon ish. And then um, I use like collagen. It's just another protein. Um, yep. right into a smoothie. Tell us your other ways to get uh, protein in. Yeah. Okay. So I wrote some down here and then I'm going to include, I'm going to write this down here at the end. Cause when you talk about almond butter, oh my gosh, I'm going to, um, uh, I'm going to, um, write down my favorite. Um, it's a cookie dough recipe. It's so, it's so good. Um, and this is what I have for a treat. So, so for a day, you know, how do I get, oh my gosh, a hundred grams. That seems like a ton. How would I do that? How would I possibly do that? Well, first thing in the morning, if you have that protein shake, boom, 20 grams of protein right there. And then say you go do an early morning workout or something like that. Okay. Yep. And you come back and you're like, okay, I need breakfast. I'm going to have two eggs, two egg whites, you know, okay. And toast or something with that. Great. Yep. There you go. Um, for lunch, you're going to have at least half a chicken breast, at least like a good sized chicken breast, half a chicken breast, and then some salad and quinoa in there or something like that. Great. Um, here, you know, for your second snack, it's yogurt and protein, like adding some, this can be almond yogurt and doing the dairy free, um, protein in there, making it like a smoothie bowl, putting some chia seeds on top, hemp seeds on top, whatever that may be. Mm -hmm. Um, this is really delicious. Um, and then having some like fish, rice, and asparagus for dinner, right? There you go. And, and it's less about how you cook this stuff, right? Like so many people are like, oh, don't use any fat or blah, blah, blah. No, like get your proteins in first and then worry about some of those other pieces. Because once you get these proteins in, it's amazing how quickly it increases your energy, your mental clarity, your stress response is much better. You'll start to feel leaner right? You do this for a week, you're going to feel leaner. You're gonna be like, Oh my God, this is crazy. This really works. 
Um, a lot of people notice their sleep improves. Again, you're getting just different fuel. And while you're sleeping, your body's job is to rest repair. So it increases different natural growth hormone production at night because you're getting more protein in during the day. All this cool stuff happens when you get enough protein in your system. I mean, I, I do recommend like well-balanced diet, right? Like protein, fats, and carbs, you know, new, full, complete nutrients, not just eating like half of a cow yeah. all day. <laughs> Um, no. but, but protein powder is really one of the easiest, best ways to fill the gaps here. And, and of course eat like whole foods, right? Well, look, there's like regular foods on here, whole foods mm -hmm. on here. It's just, again, I'm a busy mom. I've got three kids and a husband. I have a hard time getting all my protein needs in a day from just food. So having a shake, I have at least one shake a day. I'll make protein balls, protein bars. I'll add it in yogurt. I add it in pro, um, oatmeal. I add it in, uh, I make muffins, right? Protein muffins, protein um, banana bread, right? I sneak it in everywhere. I'll put protein in my kids' peanut butter and make a sandwich with it for them. Super easy. And then my favorite treat at the end of the day is protein cookie dough. And I'll use a scoop. So it's the, I'll get a full serving of the protein powder, right? And then it's about two tablespoons of like peanut butter. You can use almond butter, nut butter, whatever that is. And then, you know, um, two to three tablespoons of, you know, some type of uh, liquid. You can use water, almond milk, nut, you know, um, oat milk, coconut milk, whatever you want to do. A lot of times with using like almond milk, people say, oh, I'm using almond milk. There's protein in that. There's really not that much. Yeah. Almond it's milk. Like, Somebody just said they only saw that theirs had only one gram of protein in it in their almond yes. milk. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah. We think like, oh, it's, it's almonds. It's a nut. Of course there's tons of protein in it. No, it's really not, because it's the milk of it. You're not getting the meaty part of it, which is where the protein is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's delicious. It's just delicious, but it's not lots of protein. So mixing, so I use chocolate protein. I'll use, um, you know, almond, almond butter. <clears throat> I love Costco. I'm not sponsored by Costco, but I love Costco and I love their almond butter. Um, and I'll use that. And then I'll use, um, almond milk and sometimes mm -hmm. I'll put in some extra, you know, cocoa powder or something. If I really want it super chocolatey. Um, I also love the, what are the, 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 um, chocolate chunks, the, um, the enjoy life, they're dairy free, mm. nut free, you know, little, sometimes I'll put chocolate chunks on the top, um, of that too, but I just, I mix this together and then that's, that's what it is. It like makes this weird paste thing, mm -hmm. but a little chocolate chips on top. It tastes like cookie dough and it's amazing and it's delicious. And it's my favorite treat. It just looks a little weird, but it's so good. It's and so, it's, so and you know, it's so good for you. So when, when you get this webinar playback, you should like take your phone and take a little picture of that little recipe she has down in the corner. Um, and then, yeah, during, when we send you guys the playback, we'll actually link to, she's got a, Dr. Beth has a cool cookbook on protein, um, high protein, uh, yeah. like snacks and stuff like that. So really good recipes. I've personally tried several of them and we, we like them too. Um, Okay. And actually too, I wanted to let everybody on the webinar know that um, starting November 5th, if you want to join us, we're going to do like a 10 days of protein. Um, what do we call it? Not a challenge. It's not, you have, you don't have to follow all the recipes every day, but you can like, we, you can participate and sign up and we're going to release, we're going to um, create a, a private Facebook group where we're going to share a bunch of um, protein smoothie recipes and, and our favorite protein snacks for 10 days, kind of like 10 days of protein, just to encourage us all to eat our protein and get awesome ideas from one another and really some festive, fun kind of holiday themed protein um, smoothies and snacks. So join us for that. You're going to want to sign up for that and you can use your coach field for that too, um, yeah. because we want to encourage you to eat your protein. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. That's going to change a ton. 10 days of that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It changes yeah. a lot. Mm -hmm. Like you said, you'll feel the difference. Yeah. So, um, we, I want to open it up to your questions. We are almost out of time here. Um, cool. And if you're, if you're in for that 10, 10 day of protein, 
it's kind of like 10 days of Christmas, but it's like 12 days of Christmas, but it's not, it's 10 days of protein, <laughs> but we should create a little jingle for it. Um, you can reply to the playback email and join us for that. Um, any questions we have for Dr. Beth um, af as we wrap up? We learned a ton about how our bodies have changed. We learned a ton about the importance of maintaining our muscle as we age and as we go through these different phases in order to continue functioning well and, and prevent additional fat storage. We learned about how our fat cells are impacted by our hormone uh, activity and about the importance of protein. Um, anything else you left out, Dr. Beth, or that you wanted to leave us with? <laughs> um, one of the things, uh, one of my goals when I, whenever I do a talk is that, you know, I'm hoping that you guys had some light bulbs go off. Mm -hmm. That's a, like, I hope that some of you are like, oh my gosh, yes. Or, oh, that's totally me. Or, oh, and then if you're thinking, oh, what about this? Or I have a thyroid issue. How is this going to affect me? Or I have, you know, cause I'm sure you're thinking this might be different for me because of this way or something like that. Please don't hesitate to either reach out to me or, or, um, I have a YouTube channel with a ton more videos, or again, if you're looking for more resources, um, you know, there's a lot of different references I can give you of other experts. You know, there's a protein pacing book. There's other books on things for you to dive into, but that's the, that's the biggest thing I want to encourage you. This is just like, this is like the door just swinging open and then there's like a floodgate. So just yes. ride that wave. Follow Dr. Beth Westy on YouTube is one of my favorite places. She has an awesome YouTube channel or Facebook. And she posts these like almost daily videos of little educational blurbs, little nuggets of five minutes. Mm -hmm. um, you can learn something and you can just, you know, that's a wealth of information there. I also like to follow her on Instagram. But I would recommend definitely YouTube. Um, and then, of course, you have your website, too. YouTube, Facebook, yeah. Instagram. Um, yeah. And we will send you the links as well to follow her after this and um, download that, uh, that book, that recipe book. So, you guys, we hope that you found this valuable. If you think of anything else, please don't hesitate to reach out. And we can provide additional kind of education on this topic. But we hope that you found it helpful and um, wishing you guys the best in your uh, in your kind of protein journey and in your menopausal and postmenopausal and perimenopausal journey. We are all in this together. And so we uh, we just are all here to support one another. But Dr. Beth, thank you so much for being here. Um, we will watch for those watch for those links in the replay. And um, Dr. Beth, thank you so much. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. Yay! All right. All the protein, all the protein. All the protein. We love you. <laughs> all right, everybody. Watch for the replay in your email. Thanks for joining us. Have a great night.